All right, guys, I'm just going to say screw it, and we're going to try and cool down that network closet and server closet today. So in front of me, I have the AC Infinity T7N. This is an intake fan that we're actually going to install on the inside of the closet to act as an exhaust. Why didn't I get the exhaust? Well, because I wanted the uh, LED, or LED sensor, wow, the LCD panel to be on the inside of the closet versus the outside of the closet. So that way, if I open the closet door, I can see the panel as opposed to going into another room to view the LCD. So, and one thing you should know, the only difference between this and the exhaust version is that the fans are essentially flipped backwards. Now I decided to go with the black one because that is the one that my wife found the most appealing. And instead of stalling this in the most optimal position, or I guess I shouldn't say optimal position, instead of stalling it horizontally, we're gonna be doing it vertically inside of the closet. And as I mentioned in a previous video, I don't really, it's not that this thing is ugly. I think it is gorgeous, it is beautiful, but there's just something about vents on the walls and the ceilings that I just find distasteful, especially when you can see them. Uh, I don't know, it's just a me thing. But I think this will still look really good in the closet, especially with the LCD panel. Now it'd be really cool if this LCC, LCD panel could actually like twist to be vertically uh, instead of always sitting horizontally. Uh, so that way it's easier to read, but you know, whatever. So this thing is capable of moving 200 CFM of air. I don't know if that's going to be enough for the closet. Uh, hopefully it will be. I think what we may run into in the future is when we add or move the servers back into that closet, it will be overwhelmed and the closet will still be pretty warm because even right now with just the network equipment in there, we're sitting at a comfortable 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's actually not comfortable. It's fine for the servers, but not for me. So, that's why we're gonna just go ahead and move forward with this. My master bedroom closet is getting totally full and I need to take that space back for, I guess, clothes and other things that actually belong in the master bedroom closet. So we just gotta move forward despite um, my concerns with the setup that we're gonna go with. And I'll talk about that more as we actually get there. So in the box, you'll find all of the screws you're, you'll need. These are all wood screws. Um, for mounting this there. There's a stencil that you probably might not be able to see. And then of course, what makes this particular product most unique is that it comes with a sensor. So it's smart in the sense that um, as soon as it reaches a certain temperature threshold, the fans can kick on automatically and there's no adjustments that you need to do. And that's really what the, what the big appeal of this particular unit was for me and one of the reasons why I decided to go with it. So let's go take a look at the network closet so I can give you guys a brief overview of exactly what the plans are so you can get a better idea of what we're gonna do before we actually install this into the network closet. Let's take a look. So here is my network closet. Some of you have seen this already and this is all the equipment that is currently in here not including any of the servers that are in the master bedroom. And we're sitting at 90 degrees Fahrenheit already. So the game plan is gonna be to install the intake fan in the top right corner vertically so that should be able to take all the air that's in the closet and exhaust that out into the laundry room. And let me just show you the laundry room real quick. So on this side, um, we are going to install a bracket that is basically just a vent cover up here in the corner. And then all the hot air from the network closet will be exhausted into the laundry room. And hopefully underneath the door without doing any other modifications, we'll be able to pull in enough cool air through this small gap right here. I don't know how big this gap is. If I had to guess, it's probably just just add an inch or just under an inch and hopefully that's enough for the intake. Okay, before I start cutting, I just want to iterate one more time. The ideal place for this intake and exhaust would be to either be in the wall above uh, where the room actually is or in the doors leading out to uh, this big hallway. And the reason why it would be more ideal to exhaust and intake air from a big hallway like this is because there's plenty of space for all that air to go. And the return for the AC is actually right there too. So any heat that's being pumped out is gonna be at the top and then easily be sucked in by this ginormous intake, or I'm sorry, air, air return. And that's the ideal position. Now, we're not doing things ideally here because I will be exhausting all of the hot air into the laundry room. Uh, the laundry room's fairly big, um, so it should be able to take in a lot of the heat, and it also has its own AC unit, so I'm not too worried about um, a lot of heat building up in here. Uh, so if it's 
a lot of heat in there. I'm not too worried about it actually like preventing any heat from escaping this room because it should be big enough. And also we leave this door open like all of the time. So I'm pretty sure all of that heat will just escape. But nonetheless, it's not the ideal uh, way to set this up if you're gonna do this in your home. So once again, don't do what I'm doing. All right, so first thing first, we're just gonna double check to make sure there's no studs here. Now there should be a stud right about here. There it is. And there should be a stud basically in this corner. Yep. And also I wanna check to make sure that there's no studs or how high the stud would be here. So that's like all the way up in the corner. All right, so the goal for this, uh, we can't put it sideways because unfortunately there's a stud here that would block, be blocking it. Actually, we might be able to do it sideways. No, we wouldn't be able to do it sideways because they were, because the unit would actually be impacting the stud that's here. So that's why we're gonna have to do it vertically. And I think this might be a good height, maybe right about there and a little bit more to the left. Actually, let's find out where that stud is again. I wanna know how far left I can go. The reason why we're setting it so far off the left is because we're gonna have to run power through this wall and also for the probe, the temperature probe. So that looks like a good spot. So now we're just gonna tape it there temporarily. So I'm choosing to use frog tape. This is essentially a painter's tape. This is gonna be really delicate on the drywall, not that it matters because I've basically trashed this room already. Um, but this should make things easier for us during the initial install. And honestly, I'm not too worried about this being perfectly level. So we're gonna do something like that. So that should hold it vertically. And then we're just gonna put a couple more pieces on this just to make sure that it doesn't move when we're cutting. So instead of using the wood screws that are included with the kit, I'm actually gonna use drywall screws. Uh, mostly because I have these laying around and these are also self-tapping and honestly I don't think it matters too much but I have a bit more length than the wood screws that were included uh, so I think these are going to do a bit better job of holding themselves on and also if I decide to like remove it for any reason I think this will be easier to like or the removing the unit will be easier and then putting it back will be easier with uh, I said easier like 10 times will be easier with these. Now, one thing I'm doing different than the instructions, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put my screws into the wall first to help support this um, stencil. Now, I'm not gonna put them all the way in. I just wanna get it started so that way it doesn't get jostled around too much. That should be good enough. Now we're ready to use our drywall saw or whatever they call this thing. <sighs> Point of no return. It's funny, I, I can actually feel a cool breeze in here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a, a, a hole on the other side of this wall, basically the same way. So I did screw up my lines a little bit, curved outwards. I don't really line up very well, but hey, now we can clearly see the other side in the server room. That's pretty cool. So uh, let's get the vent installed. to go anywhere so I don't think I actually need these screws but I'm gonna put them in there just in case there's like an uh, unexpected earthquake or something 
Now the black screws that they include would actually look a lot better than these silver ones. But honestly, I'm not gonna be looking at that that often. Um, so I think for the other side, I will install the black wood screws instead. That actually looks, looks pretty good. All right, let's get the other side installed. All right, about how loud is this thing? So currently it's running at speed setting four, which I'm not really sure uh, how, how many RPM that is, but uh, it's about midway because you can go all the way up to five, I believe. And so we're standing about just over three feet away from the fan and it's at a nice comfortable, or I would say a comfortable 40 to 41, sometimes 42 decibels if my uh, phone is anything to be reliable on. And of course, this is a totally non-scientific test. I did put that piece of foam there at the bottom of the fan to try and reduce any additional uh, bouncing of sound off of the wooden desk uh, to try to try and make it a little bit more quiet, I guess, or more realistic, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Totally non-scientific, so grains of salt all around. Right now we're the same distance away as the first test, but this time the fans are ramped all the way up, speed setting six, and we're sitting at between 48 and 50 decibels at this distance. Uh, so not too great, but not too bad. Thankfully the fans will be on the inside of the closet so they may not be as loud when it's in there okay so right now we have the thing turned all the way up to speed six i don't know if you guys can hear it with the door closed but if you are unable to hear it so standing just outside of the door at the maximum speed i'm seeing about 45 decibels of noise and at the speed three i'm seeing about 36 decibels of noise so um it's actually pretty loud at speed six you are definitely able to hear it right now uh, with your own ears probably not through the microphones and then now we're basically down at the end of the hallway just outside of all of the other rooms it's still at speed six and we're hearing about 42 decibels of noise at speed three, we're gonna hear about 35 decibels of noise. And honestly, for the speed three testing at this distance, I think it's just the ambient noise of the house itself. Uh, like with things like the refrigerator and other appliance noise. I don't think it's actually the fans itself, but you can definitely hear the whine of the fans from this distance um, at speed three. So again, at this distance at speed six, we're hearing about 42 decibels and you can definitely hear it throughout the house. Now we're gonna move into the living room. Hey, two puppies. Hey, two puppies. All right, so standing here in the living room um, at the maximum speed, it's about 37 decibels. You can definitely hear it from here. So that's all the way down the hall and to the right. Easily, easily audible at this distance. And at the speed three settings, it's about 33 decibels, but I think that's just electronic noise from the kitchen that's just off to my left here and um, all the appliances over there so and that's probably the ambient noise of the house itself as well uh, it's also a little windy outside so um, I'd say speed 3 is pretty quiet if you wanted to leave it running 24 7 that seems about to be the sweet spot uh, from my very very unscientific brief testing okay and finally this is what it looks like all said and done. So that looks pretty clean, I would say, except for the cables that I have poking through the wall. The power cable is definitely long enough to reach the back of the unit, go up into the ceiling, down inside of the wall, and basically into here, or maybe even uh, behind this. The power cable is extremely long, so that would have worked out really well, and I could have cleaned that up very nicely. And the temperature probe, I could have run up into the attic as well and then over and then maybe just poked it somewhere um, through the ceiling up there uh, but right now i just have it sitting the temperature probe is just sitting right there uh, inside the network rack and um, we're gonna let that run a while and see how that does for this room and uh yeah okay and now in the laundry room uh, that this is the other side. You can see through those vents pretty easily. You can even see the drywall uh, from where it's torn. So I think it would have been a nice if they would have included like a lip on this side, like an interior lip, so that way it could hide some of that drywall. Um, what I should have should have done 
and I didn't think about till just now was maybe even like plastic dipping the inside of the wall black so you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the actual ventilation unit and the drywall back there. But that looks pretty clean and uh, despite my previous uh, complaints about that vent being ugly, I think that would have looked pretty nice. You guys think we should crack this thing open and uh, see what it's made of on the inside? I think we should. Let's take a look. So can you replace the fans on this thing? I'm gonna go with yes, because as you can see right here, there's actually eight screws that are holding in the current fans. And again, like I mentioned earlier, you can actually flip these fans around if you need to change uh, whether they're intake or exhaust fans. And then there's uh, six screws on all the way around. So there's three on bottom and three on top that we need to remove to actually remove the shell so we can see the internals of this thing. All right, I got all the screws removed, so I'm just gonna lift up on the front grill, and that came off ridiculously easy. And as you can see, these look like just normal fans that you would find inside of any computer. Um, they're 120 millimeters, it looks like. Let me go grab a fan and see uh, if that's true. Yeah, so here's a Corsair fan, and uh, they're about the same size. It looks like the screws actually line up, so I think it'd be safe to say that you could actually replace these with uh, fans that of any computer so you could definitely get some quieter ones and definitely find some that have higher CFM now the question is is do they do they rip off the connectors so I'm looking at these here and they have um, this does appear to be PWM I can kind of tell just because there are four individual wires uh, going to each of these fans but it looks like we're gonna have to remove this if we want to see how they're plugged in to the PCB here so there's actually, this PCB is all one unit and there's actually a unit underneath that looks like I may be able to just unscrew. Here, I'll actually try and show you guys first. Yeah, so there's a PCB where the fans are plugged into down there. So I'm gonna see if I can unscrew that. And um, I can already tell you that it looks like they've ripped off the uh, headers, the PWM header that you would normally find on fans and uh, glued as well as well, I, yeah, they ripped them off. Glued and soldered, or maybe just soldered. Nope, all right, I'm gonna have to take this whole thing off. They used four screws. That's fine, shouldn't be too hard. I just have to be very careful when putting these screws back on because I could crack that uh, acrylic. I'm guessing that's acrylic. So here we go. So these are the fans. Actually, they did use the headers are still on there, I was mistaken. This PCB here is not actually for the fans. I'm not sure what this does. It seems to have some, maybe power? Oh, it must be some sort of converter to power the entire unit, this entire PCB. And you can see that here are your headers. Now these don't look to be like standard PWM fan headers that you would find in a typical computer, but I'm about, I'm very, very confident that you could easily just rip out these cables and then put in your own PWM fans uh, with this and they're, they're glued down in there, but it looks like a hot glue gun, or not hot glue gun, uh, looks like a hot air gun can remove that glue so you can replace them. So pretty cool. Oh, and there's a speaker right here. Neat. Uh, let's get this thing put back together. <laughs> All right, cool. Got that reassembled pretty easily, I would say. So I'm not gonna take the fans out. There's really no need. Um, you can just trust me when I say that they are uh, definitely swappable if you so choose. Ta -da. Okay, so it's been a few hours since we installed the fan or vent, exhaust vent, whatever you want to call it. And it looks like we're sitting at 80 degrees Fahrenheit as opposed to the normal, or I would say normal 90s, 91s. Now let's see what our other temperature probe says here. So that one claims to be at 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so I wonder which one's more accurate. They are in two different places. Uh, the other temperature probe, you probably can't see it, is actually right there in back. And then the new temperature probe is just sitting right there. So, but just from a um, subjective point of view, it feels significantly cooler already just opening in that door. Normally when you open it, you get hit by a pretty nice blast of heat. So this is actually turning out pretty good so far. Um, even though it's only 200 CFM and at the medium speed setting or speed setting three with just the network equipment. So we may actually be able to move the servers into here. I guess we'll find out.
A couple more days have passed by and I've spot checked the room to see what the temperatures are at and I've always been seeing about 79 degrees Fahrenheit on the AC Infinity fan system and about 84 or 83 according to the other thermometer I have in there. Uh, there hasn't been much fluctuation between the two. It's usually hovering around 79 and 83 according to both sensors. So I decided to go ahead and move the server rack into the closet and see how that would do. Now it's been in there for a few hours and the last I checked I was seeing a reading of 82 degrees Fahrenheit on the AC Infinity fan system. So that uh, has a 2% buffer put in there, so I don't know if that's a 2 degree buffer or if it's a literal percentage, but I don't think it is a literal percentage. So I, I'm guessing that it's going to stay on as long as the temperature is at 80 degrees Fahrenheit in that room. And it seems fine for now. I think we're going to have to sit on it a little bit longer to see how it actually plays out in the long term. But unfortunately, I think what I'm going to do is actually just end this video um, without going on a few more days because it's it's actually been a long time and yeah I know gathering temperatures is really easy to do but it's time to wrap things up. We're gonna wrap things up with a bit of a Q&A uh, before we officially end this video and one of the first questions that I think you guys might have in mind is why did I install the exhaust vent vertically instead of horizontally? So I briefly discussed this in the beginning uh, the reason why it's installed vertically is because it just doesn't fit between the two studs uh, and that's straight up why. Uh, ideally, I would do it horizontally if I could, but I just can't. The next question is, why did you install it to vent into another room? And as I mentioned earlier, I did that because we found that the vent was uns unsightly. It's not something we wanted to look at every day in the hallway. Uh, my wife wanted it kind of out of sight. She didn't mind that it was in the laundry room because it could be tucked in the corner. And we, even though we both actually really like the black uh, grill that is on the system, we just didn't really feel comfortable with it in the hallway because we would actually have to have it offset if we wanted it in the hallway. So up, offset above the door frame that is. So that's why it's in that room. Is there a better way? Yes. So this is actually kind of a loaded question. So the there's a lot there's a few different ways one we already discussed so i'm not going to go back into that but one of the other best ways would be to take all the hot air out of that room and somehow get it back into the ac return um, the problem the, and the problem the reason why i didn't do that is because one i wanted that any air going back to the return to be on a filter and i couldn't really figure out a good filtering mechanism for the air going back i did have some ideas on how to do that and then also another reason why I didn't go that route is because I just couldn't find any valuable information on whether or not that's okay. So I think that it would be okay if your AC return is designed to take in that additional airflow because apparently there is a spec for that and I honestly think it would be okay and I don't mind that if I'm dumping hot air back into the house in the hallway that it just kind of like sits in the return uh, or where the return is in the hallway because that's where I was going to connect it. I don't really mind that at all. I think that approach is fine. Uh, but again, with not too good information, we're just going to go with what we have here temporarily, hopefully permanently, and see how that works out. So we may end up actually uh, trying to pipe out all of that heat uh, into the return in the future. Uh, why didn't I exhaust into the attic? And I'm gonna go ahead and include the roof or outside. Uh, so I don't exhaust into the attic because I'm not trying to cool my attic and I'm not trying to cool the planet by exhausting straight up through the roof and also straight outside like through like any one of the walls. Uh, and also I th during some of my research, uh, people had mentioned that if you exhaust straight into the outside, you could create some uh, pressure problems inside of the house so it wouldn't cool or heat as effectively and you don't want to do that. Uh, you probably could do it with some professional help but honestly it would I would have to have cold air piped in there and then seal the door off and then exhaust that hair that air out if I wanted to uh, do that so it's its own like system outside of the house's system but that can get expensive really quickly and that's not something you want to do. So I'm not been to the attic or outside because it's terribly inefficient and I'm not trying to waste any more money than I already have. <laughs> what would I recommend for you at home? So if you are kind of in a similar situation where you have a network closet or server closet that needs to have air 
Uh, my recommendation would be, you know, to get that, to have an intake to pull in cool air at the base of the door or the base of the wall, and then an exhaust at the top of the door or the top of the wall to get all that heat out. So you'll get a nice cyclical uh, airflow in there. And that should keep things relatively cool. Ideally, you exhaust that into a bigger room, so like into a living room, into a hallway, or any large space and not into another room like I did. Although, I'm pretty sure it will be fine if you did do that, but recommending it for other people, I would not do that at all. I would not do what I did. What was I worried about most? So I think what I'm currently worried about is we just cut up the wall and it's not gonna work. Um, that remains to be seen at this moment. I have pretty high confidence that it'll be fine. I'm comfortable with the servers running at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, or at least the ambient temperature being 80 degrees Fahrenheit in that room. I think they'll be okay. Um, I've done it hotter in the past, and now it's winter time, so it should even be more okay. So my only real worry or concern is what it's gonna be like in the summer. Uh, so we may have to find a more elaborate solution uh, next year. And finally, the last question that I that I could come up with is what are some things that I like about the T7N specifically? Um, so I touched on this a little bit in, in the earlier parts of this video. I like the fact that it has a sensor. I like that it's smart so you can set a temperature threshold and that it will kick on uh, once it reaches that threshold. You can leave it permanently on. You can change the change the uh, to, to Celsius from Fahrenheit, or you can lock it. So if you do have a child like I do, and you have a vent at the base of the door, you can actually lock that panel. But honestly, I think most kids would be able to unlock it very quickly, uh, considering there's no like pin or something like that. And obviously, I think it is just a really nice looking piece of hardware. Um, I couldn't find anything remotely close to it on the market. Most were these like round, very plasticky looking fans um, that had great CFM, but they were reportedly at like 42 decibels and they were all seemed very loud um, just out of the box. And it's just one fan and they're around and just even uglier than everything else on the market. And honestly, AC Infinity has a very unique looking product that feels high quality. It's like anodized al aluminum, I think. So kind of, it's got a metal feel to it. So it feels very high quality and it's fairly inexpensive uh, for what it is. And also you can probably replace the fans, which is not something I intend to do, but I thought it was pretty cool that it does look like this is, you know, for a PC or yeah, for a PC type of environment or home lab environment. Um, so those are the things I think that stand out most to me and why I went with the uh, T7N. So this ended up being a pretty fun little project. I'll probably follow up in a vlog later on about the T7N to see how it went. I've already reached out to AC Infinity because they have a different model, the T9 Pro, which is supposed to be coming out sometime this century. Uh, it's a triple flan model. It has 320 CFM, and I think that's gonna do much better in that closet uh, than the current one because it's able to just get more airflow through there or out of there actually. Well, no, three is fine. And um, I'm not sure about how all the math works for that kind of stuff, but you are supposed to calculate the size of the room and the amount of heat that you're pumping in there to get how much CFM, the minimum CFM that you would need. And some of the math I played around with was saying, you know, upwards of 400 CFM. It could be high, it could be low, I don't know. But hopefully they come out with that and I will totally give that a try if things go south. And I'm only running one server. I'm not even running all three of them. I'm only running one. Uh, so I have a feeling that if I were to turn on the other two and actually leave them running 24-7, things would get very toasty in there and I would need a more uh, elegant solution. And with all that being said, I think we're ready to wrap up. So I just want to thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.